Yes, I know it's not February anymore, but I never stop celebrating the glory that is Reb Brown, and damn it, neither should you. This is Death of a Soldier. The boys are all arriving from the USA. This is not an action movie at all. In fact, it's unlike any other movie Reb Brown's ever done. Without a doubt, it's his most serious and dramatic performance, which is why I chose this movie, to provide a contrast to movies like Robo War and demonstrate that this man has range. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to say, I really hate this title, Death of a Soldier. I mean, dude! Spoilers! It's kind of hard to tell what's even going on on the box. It's some kind of sepia-toned, old-timey photo of a guy upside down. It kind of looks like one of those photos you see in the opening credits of Cheers. This is a really weird looking way for a soldier to die doing a handstand on a bar, so I guess we gotta watch this movie to see how the hell this kills him. The movie is set in Melbourne, Australia in 1942, the Pacific Theater of World War II. The United States set up a base in Australia a little while ago, and even though we're on the same side, there exists some tensions between the two governments and their armed forces. The Aussies don't really like the Yanks, who I think saw us as latecomers to the war, and they didn't much appreciate us moving in, raiding their collective fridges, and screwing their collective sisters. And it falls to Assistant Provost Marshal Major Patrick Dannenberg of the Military Police to maintain order and improve morale. He's played by one of my favorite actors of all time, James Coburn. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, all I'm saying is that you are going to have 48,000 American troops deposited on your soil within a week. And it's my job to make their lives and yours tolerable. For example, perhaps we could have movies on Sunday. Oh, wow. Okay, it wasn't a great idea, but it wasn't exactly walk out of the room bad. Yeah, fuck your movies and fuck you, mate. See you around, Bert. It seems that the American soldiers don't exactly have a reputation for being well-behaved, as evidenced when we're introduced to Reb's character, Private Eddie Leonsky, who's on the prowl for some Sheilas. That's what I was telling you. Now watch me and learn. Oh, oh, step back, guys. Prepare to take notes. We're about to watch this surgeon operate. Oh, wise guy, eh? Excuse me. Boom! Ah! Sorry, baby! Ah! How is it possible that Reb's character in this movie has worse technique picking up women than the caveman he played in your? How'd you do? Not very good. <laughs> good lord! The boys at the Roxbury had more style than these two. They're always after chicks and beer in every single scene they're in. Boo! <laughs> Jesus, Eddie, you're gonna behave. Ah, bullshit, shut up, Gallo. I'm having fun. Jeez! I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm not dealing well seeing Reb acting so out of character. I need some stability, something I can hold on to, something familiar. She likes <laughs> what she sees. Ah, we're back. You know, the man has one reaction to both joy and anger, but damn it, it works. Had to speak Australian. Catch up! Mix drinks. Beer. This scene is just phenomenal. Wow. I haven't seen drinking like this since Brad Jones posed nude in one of his videos. Yeah! I'm sorry, I'm just really impressed with this scene. You can't teach this. He is the ultimate man here. You think you could drink like this? Red Brown even drinks better than you. I can drink better than anyone! I feel great! The next morning, James Coburn's called out to a murder scene where a woman's been strangled and dumped on a street corner. Man, that's just mean. That's mean, man. A witness is able to finger an American soldier for the crime because he recognizes the uniform. Spoilers, it's Reb. But the U.S. officers don't buy it and sweep the whole thing under the rug as an isolated incident. Police never find these guys anyway. I mean, cops found strangled hookers in my neighborhood all the time and they didn't catch me for years. <laughs> Reb gets a letter from Stateside that makes him really homesick, but luckily his buddy Flounder here has a great plan to cheer him up. Which is the same thing they do every night. Uh, get pants shittingly drunk on grain alcohol and vomit on women. We'll go into town. We'll have fun like we did last night. Yeah! We're going to town. Get drunk, get some girls. 
I bet you were ready for just about anything, but you probably weren't ready for a movie where Red Brown dances in a conga line and spends the whole movie styling and profiling just like the nature boy Ric Flair. I'm gonna get on the bar! Oh, so that's where the picture on the box cover comes from. He's drunken, walking on his hands on the bar. I don't know, it just seems like a really strange choice. It doesn't exactly scream death of a soldier to me. Although it is one of the more visually interesting scenes in the whole movie, and that's, that's just really kind of sad. The rest of the movie is just a bunch of people talking and James Coburn looking ambivalent. When a woman in the bar follows suit and starts doing her own bar aerobics, it stirs something deep in Reb's soul. I mean, you can see it. Whoa. Oh, wow. Hubba, hubba, hubba. I am with Reb, folks. I am completely transfixed by those modest bloomers. Ooh. Hey, it's the 1940s, people. Seeing a girl's granny panties back then was on the same level as downloading the Paris Hilton sex tape today. But yeah, as you probably gathered, Reb has a few issues with women in this movie. I really like your voice. <laughs> Sing some more for me. It's really pretty. Oh, shit. <laughs> Well, that's when things take a really dark turn and Reb just suddenly strangles the poor woman to death. <laughs> that is Spank Australia. Stay with your boys. Come here, boy! Come here, boy! Divorce. Beer. Look, I know how this is gonna sound, but I gotta side with Reb on this one. The man has a clinical need to kill someone every 24 hours, preferably with a machine gun. Give the man a gun or a motorboat and point him towards Japan. Two days and the war's over. Meanwhile, James Coburn's also managed to hook up with some fine MILF action for a romantic dinner at her place. Did you enjoy your meal? Yes, beautiful. I'll pretend that you're referring to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, both. You come out on top. I'm flattered. And you're stark naked under that dress. <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa! Did you enjoy your meal? And you're stark naked under that dress. Where the hell did that come from? You can't just change gears from dinner to smut like that. We got a new client and the bank will make a lot of money. Anyway, how is your sex life? You seem to remember this rather dirty little boy. Dirty little boy? School. On sports afternoons he used to walk me home. And he'd try and put his hand up my dress. Disgraceful. And that's what I thought. What did you do? Well, I let him. You let him? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you know something else? What? I liked it. Well, but you did. This is a weird conversation. And dirty. What the fuck? Oh, anyway. Now that there's been two murders, the military can't keep blaming them on random dingo attacks, so James Coburn's bosses, including General MacArthur, start getting on his case to go actually solve it. And I want you to keep this down, out of the papers as much as possible, you understand? Yes, sir. I don't want this to turn ugly. Well, it can't get that bad. Surely the Australian public can tell that this is the work of a lone madman, and is in no way being ignored or tacitly approved by the U.S. military. Yeah, well, okay, people are just upset, and you can see why. It's right after the murder, tensions are running high, but this is all very short-term. It'll blow over, and you'll notice they're pointing their anger where it's deserved. The supervising officers, the people in charge of the investigation, they're not directing their anger towards our innocent fighting men. You fucking dead boy! Oh my god. Two majors don't pull your finger out and find this bloke. This will go on every night. <laughs> every night? Oh, man, be serious. It was just a fight. It released tension. That's how men deal with stress. One good dust up and everything should be. Oh, come on! <laughs> well, that's just great. Now we're at war with Australia. You know. Australia, I didn't want this, but you guys, you're out of control. Don't wave your dick at an Aussie, you'll blow your goddamn head off, I suppose. Seriously, what the hell's the deal with Australia anyway? 
Not even the British understand you. Just look at this. Australian rules football? I mean, what the fuck is that? And the platypus? I've gotten less bizarre shit hitting the randomizer button generating a character in Champions Online. I hope this movie turns into a Red Brown revenge flick where he personally kills Paul Hogan with a grenade launcher. Do you want to get nuts, Australia? Because I can get nuts. Yahoo Serious just made the list. Do you see what happens when you fuck with me? What the hell was I talking about? 30 beers. Oh! Reb killing women and Australians being stupid, right? Okay, Reb keeps on getting hammered out of his skull and victimizing women. Oh, and oh god, Reb's trying the naked man maneuver. It's a daring first date gambit wherein you surprise the woman by spontaneously going nude. <laughs> there is no way that works. Two out of three times. Two out of three times. Two out of three times. Just go. Sing for me or I'll kill you. Just like I did those two girls. I'll scream if you don't go. And somehow she's able to just throw him out of the apartment. I can't really explain this. He admits openly to killing the other women and just lets her live? I guess he's just too drunk or crazy to care because he leaves and finds another woman to attack after creepily and obviously stalking her like a weirdo for like five minutes at a bus stop. If you don't mind me saying, I am so much more subtle than this guy. Why are you following me? Watch your voice. Watch your voice. He tries to strangle this woman too, but somehow she gets away as well. Jeez, Reb's really off his game. I guess if I struck out with the naked man, my confidence would be in the toilet too. And despite Reb's complete lack of subtlety and openly trying to strangle women in public, the guy is basically pants on his head, cock in his hand insane, the cops just can't find the guy. Even though there are several witnesses who know it's a blonde guy, and they know his rank, and his first name, and the surviving two witnesses come by the base, nobody's able to ID the guy. Is it really that hard to pick Reb Brown out of a lineup? You know, it might help the first chick out a lot if you had all the guys awkwardly strip down to their underwear and go, Yeah! After all, his face wasn't the only thing she got a really good look at. Yeah. Yeah, you know about werewolves? What are you talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, I know all about werewolves. Uh, silver stakes, magic holy earplugs. I, I saw Howling 2, and Howling 2 had the exact same director as Death of a Soldier. I'm so not even kidding, because when I think World War II era legal docudrama, I think of the guy who directed Steerbo Werewolf Bitch. Jekyll and Hyde, just like in the movie. That's me! The movie? You know those murders? Those girls that were murdered? What murders? You I don't, I don't, I killed them! been drinking again? <laughs> <Penny>. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It just does not get any funnier than watching Red Brown try to cry on camera. They got tons of popcorn there. I'm gonna miss her a lot, too. <laughs> I killed been drinking again? <laughs> I don't know, I can't remember. Eddie, Eddie, we'll go into town. And we'll get drunk and you can walk on your hands. What? No! Are you out of your fucking mind? The guy just told you he murdered two women and you want to get him drunk and around women again. What is wrong with you? Yeah! Have some fun, get some girls, okay, yeah. <laughs> Meantime, the U.S. brass are having a public relations nightmare. We have to make an example. You get us someone to hang. Give us someone to hang? If that's what he wants, that's what he gets. Man, that's just mean. That's mean, man. Reb just keeps on committing blatant murders without even attempting to cover them up. Seriously, at some point he just walks into the base covered in mud, weeping like a child until even Flounder here puts it together and calls the MPs. Sir? He says he's a werewolf, and he killed those girls. Oh, come on! When the MPs come and arrest him, Reb cops that the murders immediately, admits everything, but nobody can quite figure out his motive for doing it. I like girls a lot, especially their voices. They got nice voices. Do you like singing, Eddie? It's a lovely day tomorrow. Tomorrow is a lovely day. Come and feast your dear dimmed eyes And every little thing looks gray Just forget your troubles and learn to say Tomorrow is a lovely day <laughs> Oh, I'm having some fun now. Okay. First off, wow. Second of all, that... 
just happened. And to recap what just happened, what we've got here is a movie where Reb Brown plays a serial killer who strangles people so he can steal their voices so he can sing Irving Berlin show tunes like a woman. You can't make this shit up. Really. Apparently you can't. This movie appears to be pretty closely based on a true story. Anyway, the military appoints James Coburn as Reb's legal counsel because who better to represent a suspected mass murderer than the MP who led the investigation against him? Still, he takes the job seriously and already has concerns that Reb might have a legitimate insanity plea. I mean, just look at the guy. Not only that, but the Melbourne cops also come up with an almost identical case from a few years ago. A strangler who killed women to steal their voices, driven insane because of a rare brain disease triggered by severe alcoholism. I find this part of the movie really hard to believe. I mean, they found a killer with the exact same M.O. and motive? Despite all this, though, a medical exam conducted by the military finds Reb legally sane, and the court-martial isn't very interested in that whole due process thing, or that evidence thing, or that testimony of any kind thing. Could there have been premeditation on the part of the defendant? Objection. Premeditation was not within the scope of the medical examination. Sustained. Well, could there have been premeditation? Objection. Sustained. Move it along, counselor. We hurry, we can get this dirtbag hanged before lunchtime. Could there have been intent? Objection. Sustained. Sustained times a million. Sustained times infinity. Uh, Doctor, what is your opinion on the question of premeditation and intent? Objection. Sustained. Sustained. Well, the defense now raises in the strongest possible terms the objection to the non-admittance and the non-acceptance of evidence la, la, concerning la, la, not the listening, sanity sustained, of the la, la, la. So, yeah, the court-martial is basically a show trial to get Reb lynched and calm the Aussies down. Coburn goes to the mat for the guy, even going so far as to try to appeal to the Supreme Court, but the movie hints that the military issues a communications blackout specifically to prevent that from happening. In the end, word doesn't reach the Supreme Court in time, Reb dances on the end of a rope, James Coburn gets promoted, and nobody's really all that sad. So what was the point of all that? Well, the Leonsky case in this movie was one of the main reasons for the institution of the United States Uniform Code of Military Justice. So thank you, Reb Brown, for helping to educate us, to bring due process and justice to our servicemen and women, and for making shows like JAG and NCIS possible. Wait a minute. NCIS? Hang on. They're on the list. The boys are all arriving from the USA. They're talking to a lady saying, what do you say? Girls were excited by the new fun fun with all the dandy silky stockings and the chewing gum. So don't forget what we say. Give your love to the boys from the USA. Local boys are fine, but they lack a little style. The Yankee boys just beat by a country mile. Now don't forget the past. Though they were good to you then, but even that didn't last. So don't forget what we say. Give your love to the boys from the USA. Sorry, baby! Ah! Christ.